Um, I failed to go over uh, these two questions, or these several questions, I guess, inside the um, first review, so I'll address those here. Uh, it says, find the equation of each of the two lines graphed below and state their slopes. Uh, so, uh, this first one, this horizontal one, is pretty easy. Uh, that's y equals 2. And the slope of a horizontal line, m is 0. Um, this one, uh, the y uh, intercept looks like it's negative one half. I'm going to maybe use a different approach to make sure that it is negative one half. Uh, but the slope of this, I know that that point there is two two, and it looks like c down here is at negative one negative two. Uh, so difference in y is two minus negative two is four, and two minus negative one uh, is three. So you get four thirds for slope. Uh, I'm going to use y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1 uh, to get my equation. Um, I'm going to use 2, 2 as x1, y1. So y minus 2 is equal to 4 thirds x minus 2. So that gives me y minus 2 is equal to 4 thirds x minus 8 thirds. I will add 2 thirds to both, or sorry, add 2 to both sides. So I'll get rid of that, maybe. So add 2 to both sides. So 2 as a fraction of 6 thirds. Um, so it gives me eventually y equals 4 thirds x uh, minus 2 thirds. All right, so when I said it looked like negative 1 half, going off looks is probably a bad idea. Uh, we want to use off the formula, and it does give me negative two thirds. So that point right there is you know negative point six 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 seven, uh, or maybe six repeating. Uh, this question says: Booth the State Fair sells hot dogs. The manager has determined that the total cost to make six hundred hot dogs is nine hundred fifty dollars. Total cost thousand hot dogs is twelve fifty. Uh, assume the relationship the cost uh, number of hot dogs is linear. Find the linear equation that represents this relationship. So we're looking at some ordered pairs here of 600. Six hundred hot dogs produces nine hundred fifty dollars, and a uh, thousand hot dogs produces twelve hundred fifty dollars. So it says hot dogs comma dollars. That's kind of the set of ordered pairs. Um, create an equation. I'm gonna go y. Minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. I gotta find m though. So finding m is gonna be the difference in your y's. So 950 minus 1250 uh, gives me negative 300. So negative 300 up top. And then uh, 600 minus 1000 gives me uh, negative 400 on the bottom. So this reduces to 3 fourths. That's my slope. Um, When we um, <coughs> start to try to find the equation, we're going to say that y minus y1, either one of these uh, coordinates, or set of coordinates works. I'm going to use the top one because they're smaller numbers. So 950 is equal to then 3 fourths times x minus uh, 600. And now you're just going to you know multiply that out, solve for y. Okay, so uh, that will give you... Uh, that linear equation. <clears throat> Answer part B. Um, I'm going to ask for the slope. Uh, the slope is, um, if we remember what the numerator means, the, the difference in y is that's, that's dollars, and the denominator is 4, uh, or 4, negative 400, and that was regards to hot dogs. So basically it tells us that um, Every hot dog is going to cost 75 cents, okay? So each hot dog cost 0.75. Or another way of thinking about it is that for every $3 purchases, 
four hot dogs, or you can write it vice versa. For every four hot dogs, it costs three dollars. Uh, but that's what we're thinking about for slip. Uh, down here, um, this one's transformation. I don't really care what the function is, so it could be x squared, x cubed, root of x. Uh, it could be an exponential, whatever. Um, but when we have a negative out in front, remember a negative is a x-axis reflection. A negative out in front is an x-axis reflection. Um, so x-axis reflection. Uh, the 2 is a vertical stretch by 2. Dx minus 2, okay, that's a shift right 2 units. And that positive 3 is shift up 3 units. That's all you got to do for that. Um, if you want to point to things like that in the the final, I'm okay with that. All right, so the first video shows five through mm, I think I got to seventeen. Um, this one. So solve the system algebraically. Uh, so what we're going to do, uh, however you want to do it, don't, I'm going to use elimination, which you can use substitution if you want to. Uh, but I'm going to create that, I'm going to multiply that bottom equation by 2. So it gives me 6x minus 2y equals 24. This is 4x plus 2y equals 2. Add straight down, gives me 10x. Over here it gives me 26. So x is 26 over 10 or uh, 13 over 5. Uh, if that's the case, then we'll plug that back in to find y. So I get 4 times 13 fifths plus 2y is equal to 2. So it gives me, what, 52 fifths plus 2y equals 2. Uh, I'm going to make that 2 a 10 fifths. We subtract 52 fifths from both sides. So we get 2y is equal to negative 42 fifths. And divide by 2, which is the same thing as multiplying by a half. So multiply both sides by a half. Gives me y to be um, negative 42 over 10, which reduces then. Uh, each of those have a factor of 2 in them. So negative, uh, what, 20? No, not 26. Um, 21. 21. I don't know why I can do that. Uh, negative 21 over 5. And that's my, so my ordered pair is 13 fifths, comma, negative 21 fifths. And you can use substitution if you want to. Um, if I use substitution using this route, uh, you might maybe somebody says I'm gonna take this bottom equation make it negative y is equal to uh, 12 minus 3x so then y would be negative 12 plus 3x and then plug that y in here and you get 4x uh, plus then 2 times negative 12 plus 3x equals 2 so then you get 4x minus 24 uh, plus 6x equals 2 um, and again, I'm going to get 10x on this side. I'll add 24 to both sides, so we get 26. Uh, so then, again, x ends up being uh, 26 over 10, or 13 fifths. And again, you can substitute that back in to find the same y value. Uh, number 18 uh, says to set up a system, and it might be a while since we've done this, um, directly. Uh, but on the on the exam, it's going to be exactly like this. Just change the different numbers here. Uh, but it says the admissions fee at an amusement park is three dollars for children. So children tickets are three dollars. Adult tickets are eight dollars. Okay. It says on a Saturday, six times as many children entered the park as adults. Okay. So let's let a equal adult tickets and let c equal children. 
tickets. If I look at this first set of um, information, it says on Saturday, six times as many children as adults. Okay, so six times as many children as adults. Okay, so if I write C equals A, that means they're the same. Okay, if I write C equals 6A, that means children is equal to six times as many adults. So that's one equation. Um, a lot of people want to put the six over here, okay? Um, and that would say adults is equal to six times as many children. Uh, so it's C equals 6A in this case. Uh, the other thing is um, that we for a child, it's $3. For an adult, it's $8. For, so for every child, we're made, every child ticket that gets sold, we're getting $3 off that. So if I sell one ticket, it's 3 bucks, two tickets, 6 bucks, three tickets, 9 bucks, 100 tickets, 300 bucks. So to write that algebraically, it's 3 times C. Um, an adult ticket is $8. So same concept gives me 8A. The sum of those two um, is going to provide me, I think this says 9350. Okay. This is how many uh, children, how many adults were admitted. So you got a system here. Uh, you can do this. You can say 3 times 6A plus 8A. Is equal to 9350. Uh, so that's 18 A's. 18 plus 8 would be uh, 26 A's. Is equal to 9350. Um, so I'm going to get my calculator out. 9350 divided by 26 gives me 359.6. Um, adults and um, once I know that A I come back in here multiply it by 6 and I get 2157.7 for children uh, now I know it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to have 0. 0.6 of an adult 0. 0.7 of a child uh, but it does kind of justify these equations 3 times uh, an adult ticket, so, or sorry, three times a child ticket, uh, and this was our C, plus then eight times that, which was the adults, I just messed everything up. So let, me, let me clear that out real quick. All right, so this this A, that's A, and that's C. Um, I'm basically what I'm trying to do is to make sure this is right. I'm trying to uh, evaluate that equation and make sure I get 9350. So I'm going to take 3 times that number and then plus 8 times that number. Why is it doing that? I apologize. Okay, so I'm going to go 3 times that thing plus 8 times that thing. I don't know why it's doing that. All right, let me do it this way. Three times C plus then eight times, I'll type that number in, three, five, nine, 
0.615538. It should be enough. Hit enter. And you do see that you get 93.50 back. Um, I don't think, I, I think probably on the way I do it on the test is that that's probably going to end up being um, whole numbers. Let me just double check real quick. <clears throat> I uh, just double checking it. It does work on the on the final. That comes out to be really nice uh, integers for results. Uh, you won't have to worry about rounding. Um, I just arbitrarily put these values in there, so uh, so it's probably obviously not going to come out to be a real nice value. Um, this one here. Um, come up with the equation of an ellipse. Remember, an ellipse is. Um, x squared over some a squared plus y squared over some b squared uh, is equal to 1. Uh, but this one's been, that's centered at 0, 0. This one's been moved away from 0, 0. Uh, so what you do is you'll have x minus some h squared and y minus some k squared, where h, k is the center. And if I look at this, you know, we can kind of maybe argue that the center here is at negative 3, comma 2. That would be pretty easy to do for us. Um, so uh, the numerator here is going to be x. Now I want to move it to the left 3. Uh, so moving to the left is actually going to make us add 3. That's how we're going to do that. We'll talk about what that a squared is in a moment. And if I wanted to move this thing up, the way I do that is y. Um, minus 2. Okay, so um, that's kind of counterintuitive of what you think. Moving left and right is going to be the opposite. So it's x plus 3 because I want to move it left. And because I wanted to move it up, 2, it became minus 2. Okay. Um, that's just the way we, we deal with it. Um, now, to find these a values, I need to know, or I guess the A and B values, I need to know that distance there, and then I need to know that distance there. So this vertical distance here uh, looks like it's 3, okay, and that's the vertical, so it goes with Y. So what I do is I take that 3 and I square it, and it gives me the denominator there uh, for uh, the Y uh, term. Now I gotta find this distance here, and it looks like so that's three, four, five, so that's five. So I square that, I get 25. And that becomes one. Okay? So that would be the generic equation, or not the generic, the, the specific equation uh, for that one ellipse, centered at negative three, positive two. Uh, here it says uh, find the vertices, foci, or foci, and uh, sketch the graph of this hyperbola. Um, so with hyperbolas, remember, I'm having trouble here. Hyperbolas, remember, are very similar to uh, ellipses. Um, the way we find the location of the foci is we take c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. Okay, um, so C is going to equal, add those two numbers together, and you're going to get 100. That's, a, that's maybe your A squared, and that's your B squared. Uh, so we get 100, the square root of that, I get 10. So the foci are, uh, are a distance of 10 units away from uh, the center. And in this case, um, this hyperbola is centered at 0, 0, because there's nothing being added to this Y or this X. Uh, so the center is there. Um, if I look at this, because the Y shows up first, that tells me that this uh, hyperbola is going to open upwards and downwards. So what I do is I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Because I take the square root of that number, and it tells me how far I go in the Y direction. And, and the positive and negative uh, direction 
And then I'm going to take the square root of that number. It tells me how far to go in the x direction. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. If you remember what we did, we created that box. Okay, because this thing's opening in uh, the y direction, when we create the diagonals of that box and extend them forever, those are our asymptotes. Okay, and I know this thing's open in the y direction. That point right there becomes a critical point for our hyperbola. And then we approach our asymptotes in both directions. Same thing there. Approach that asymptote. Approach that asymptote. Um, the foci, like I said, is 10 units from the center. So that was 8, 9, 10. So that's maybe one focus. 9, 10 in that direction. There's your second focus. Uh, this equation here of this line is y equals, it goes through 0, 0. So it's going to find the slope of that asymptote. So it's up 8 and then over 6. So up 8 over 6 uh, reduces to what, 4 thirds? x is the equation of that asymptote there. And this asymptote here is the same 4 thirds but opposite direction. So it's down 8 to the right 6. So it's negative 4 thirds. <clears throat> and that's all you need to know for, for that information. Uh, this one says to find the first four terms of the sequence. Uh, this is a recursive defined sequence. So they're saying a sub 1 is equal to 12, and they want you to find a sub 2, a sub 3, and a sub 4. Well, a sub 2 is defined off of this thing. It's 5 times a sub n minus 1. Well, n minus 1 is talking about the previous term. So this is actually 5. If a sub 2 is the term we're on, then 2 minus 1 would give me back to a sub 1. So it's 5 times a sub 1, which is 5 times 12, which would be 60. So a sub 2 is 60. Okay. a sub 3, then, is defined as 5 times a sub n minus 1. Well, a sub n minus 1 is now the previous term, which was 60. So we have 5 times 60, which would be 300. So that's your third term. The fourth term is 5 times a sub n minus 1 again. So it's 5 times the previous term. So the previous term was 300. So we have 5 times 300. It's going to be 1,500. Uh, question 25 we will not do uh, on the review. It's a, it's a nudity question I talked about uh, in class. Uh, we'll do that together on the exam. Um, and I will post tomorrow a third review. I'm running out of time here. Uh, I'll, I'll post the third review of those two questions. Be very quick, maybe three, four minutes long uh, to help you get through those two. Uh, the first one uh, is a geometric sequence. Uh, the second one is arithmetic. Uh, we haven't talked about this one. It's pretty easy uh, to, to determine. Um, and then I guess I got to do 24 as well. Uh, so I got three, three questions to finish up. So it uh, won't take too long in the third video, but these two are geometric. This one, sorry, 22 and 24 are geometric. 23 is arithmetic. Um, we can do 23 right now, but I'm running out of time. I got to go to Rhodes to, to teach. Um, but I'll put a video together tomorrow during third period, post that, and you can look at that. Um, hopefully this is helpful, um, and that we're hopefully looking at this and using it to prepare.